Ecological literacy is the ability to understand the natural systems that make life on Earth possible. Mina and Allison defined ecological literacy as an individual's understanding not only of ecological concepts, but also of his or her place in the ecosystem. Ecological literacy is meant to enable conscious and participant citizens to make informed decisions or take action on environmental issues. The term was coined by American educator David W. Orr and physicist Fritjof Capra in the 1990s. Orr indicated that knowing, caring, and practical competence form the foundation for ecological literacy. He pointed out that the root of environmental crisis is the individual's inability to think about ecological patterns, systems of causation, and long-term effects of human actions. He then emphasized the importance of one's experience in one's natural environment that can enable humans to shift perspective from one of an economic emphasis to one of balance amongst economics. Ecology and Cultures An ecologically literate society would be a sustainable society which does not destroy the natural environment on which they depend. Ecological literacy is a powerful concept as it creates a foundation for an integrated approach to environmental problems. Puck characterized an ecologically literate person of the 21st century as the responsible, lifelong learner who strives to improve the human condition and the environment with the context of self, human groups, the biosphere, and the ecosphere. To achieve this, one should become 1. An inquirer, who actively secures the basic skills and knowledge in order to carry out ecological responsibilities. This also enables him, or her, to reach his, or her own potential and place in the physical and natural environment. 2. A reflective learner, who understands the value and limitations of human knowledge, the power and limitations of the natural world, the role of intuition in real life pursuits, and the role of self as it is manifested in one's personal narrative. 3. Intelligently self-directed, who engages in self-appraisal, sets new learning objectives, develops plans to achieve the objectives, carries out the plans in a flexible, inquiry-directed manner, and reflects on the whole process. 4. Morally responsible, who governs actions with responsibility, justice, and equality to maintain harmonious relationships. 5. Ecologically responsible, who embodies ecological ideas in daily life. 6. Seek self-transcendence, who moves beyond the limitations of personal ego. By identifying with human groups, flora, fauna, and ecosphere that transcend the individual life in scope and time. The ecologically literate person of the 21st century has a positive view of life, grounded in the faith of interconnectedness, and has the capacity to competently perform significant life work and related tasks. Such a view enables him or her to look upon the human experience positively and all living things compassionately. To be ecologically literate means understanding the principles of organization of ecological communities and using those principles for creating sustainable human communities. Ecological literacy is a form of transformative education that requires shifts in three related areas. 1. Perception or seeing, 2. Conception or knowing, and 3. Action or doing. Environmental literacy is integral to fostering this understanding, emphasizing that humans are part of a global community, and that actions and decisions made locally by individuals, or communities, have effects that go well beyond local environments. Goldman, 
Bennett and Barlow suggested five ways to develop ecological literacy. 1. Develop empathy for all forms of life. All organisms need food, water, space, and other conditions to survive. By recognizing the fact that all life forms have roles to play in the environment, we can expand our sympathy to consider the quality of life of other life forms. Feel genuine concern about their well-being, and act on that concern. 2. Embrace sustainability as a community practice. Organisms do not survive in isolation. By learning about how plants, animals, and other living things are interdependent, we can be inspired to consider the role of interconnectedness within our communities and see the value in strengthening these relationships by thinking and acting cooperatively. 3. Make the invisible visible. People may be able to see what is happening in other places. Social networking websites enable people to communicate directly with citizens of distant areas and learn firsthand what the others are experiencing that is invisible to most people. Web based tools, such as Google Earth, can enable people to travel virtually and view the landscape in other regions and countries. Technological applications such as Good Guide and Fujicate present research data on the impact of certain household products on our health, the environment, and society. Field trips may be organized to directly observe places that have been quietly devastated. 4. Anticipate unintended consequences. Many of the environmental crises that we face today are the unintended consequences of human behavior. For example, the technological ability to access, produce, and use fossil fuels have led to some serious environmental problems like pollution. When an activity threatens to have a damaging impact on the environment or human health, precautionary actions should be taken regardless of whether a cause and effect relationship has been scientifically confirmed. 5. Understand how nature sustains life. First, we should be aware that all living organisms are members of a complex, interconnected web of life and that those members inhabiting a particular place depend upon their interconnectedness for survival. Second, organisms are members of systems nested within other systems, and each level supports the others to sustain life. We should realize that even a small disturbance on one organism or subsystem may have far-reaching impact to other systems. Finally, we should practice a way of life that fulfills the needs of the present generation while simultaneously supporting nature's inherent ability to sustain life into the future. We should learn that members of a healthy ecosystem do not abuse the resources they need in order to survive. We should only take from nature what we need and adjust our behavior in times of prosperity and crisis. What is environmental literacy? An individual's understanding, skills, and motivation to make responsible decisions that considers his or her relationships to natural systems, communities and future generations. Environmental literacy is more than comprehending, it is demonstrating capabilities. So while students learn about photosynthesis or water quality, those facts alone does not demonstrate environmental literacy. They should be able to identify problems and propose solutions to these problems without causing more harm. Difference between ecological literacy and environmental literacy. Environmental literacy mainly focuses on the environment as a series of issues to be resolved through values and action. Ecological literacy emphasizes that knowledge about the environment is necessary for informed decision making. This knowledge is acquired through the scientific method of systematic observation, measurement, experimentation, and the formulation, testing, and modification of hypotheses. An ecologically literate individual understands environmental realities, by specifically identifying their cause and effect relationships. Ecological literacy also emphasizes systems thinking, 
which involves identifying the various biophysical and social components in a given environmental context and distinguishing their interrelations. Allowing for the construction of a big picture view. As such, the ecologically literate individual has a clear perception and understanding of a system's dynamics and ruptures, as well as its past and alternate future trajectories. He or she understands the complexity of studied objects and phenomena, allowing for more enlightened decision-making. Upon careful consideration, there is obvious, significant overlap between ecological literacy and environmental literacy. Berkowitz and others even suggested that ecological literacy is a subset of environmental literacy. That is, environmental literacy is essentially a combination of ecological literacy and civics literacy. Today's people must understand the ecological, economic, and cultural connections between humans and the environment. And they must recognize the impact of decisions made by individuals, including themselves, and governments. What about you? Are you environmentally literate, or ecologically literate? It starts with a single step. Begin your journey towards ecological literacy today. This has been Eddie. Thank you for joining me, as we delved into, ecological literacy. See you next time.